This age of exploration was Spain's golden age. And then King Ferdinand of Aragon and his wife, Queen Isabella of Castile, did something stupid. They heeded the counsel of reactionary priests and started the Spanish Inquisition. As a result, tens of thousands of Jews fled. In the latter half of the 16th century, profound changes were taking place in England and Holland. Holland, known for religious tolerance, was a Spanish possession when the Inquisition began, but declared independence in 1581 and eventually kicked the Spanish out. Meanwhile, in England, the Anglican Church broke away from Rome under Queen Elizabeth. To wit, the Catholic Church was losing its authority in these countries, and that's where many Jews fleeing from Portugal and Spain went. And, there's good reason to believe that at least some of the Templar remnant there went with them. Here's why. The religious convictions of the heirs and descendants of the Templar Knights, officially a heretic order, would have been suspect in the eyes of the Catholic Church. The Spanish Inquisition was not just an attack against Jews and Muslims. Any deviation from strict Catholic doctrine was grounds for persecution, and rumors of the Templars' Gnostic beliefs and occult practices had led to their banning. The Knights of the Spanish and Portuguese orders had developed a fruitful partnership with Jewish merchants in Spain and Portugal, who not only invested in voyages to the New World, Africa, and the Far East, but also played a role in marketing valuable goods brought back. Queen Isabella, King Ferdinand, and their successors expropriated property from the orders while the Inquisition raged to help pay for military entanglements, notably against the English and the Dutch. Maybe the best indication that the Templar remnant followed their fleeing Jewish partners is that as the Spanish Inquisition dragged on, Portuguese and Spanish dominance on the high seas went into decline, while that of England and Holland surged. This culminated in the establishment of the Dutch and British East India Companies, which both Freemasons and Jewish merchants played significant roles in. This notion of a Templar flight from Spain and Portugal to England and Holland is almost completely undocumented, but seems very likely, and, if accurate, is startling for it allows us to trace a continuous thread of conquering, plunder, commercial domination, and colonization. It begins with Rollo the Viking, who invades and conquers northern France in the ninth century. The Franks make peace with Rollo and his Vikings by granting them Normandy. A century later, Normans invade and conquer southern Italy and Sicily. Then in the eleventh century, more Normans invade and conquer England. They are led by William the Conqueror, Rollo the Viking's direct descendant. A generation later, Normans and allies from all over Europe invade and conquer the Holy Land, at least for a time. This is when the Templar Knights are born. The Templars, in turn, dominate the commerce of the Christian world until they are banned and flee. From Portugal and Spain, they begin exploring the world and establishing trade routes, but are chased out by the Catholic Church again, this time fleeing to northern Europe and England. There, they and the local Templar remnant, who will later come out of the closet as Freemasons, set up the Dutch and British East India Companies with the help of Jewish merchants and begin colonizing the world. The thread doesn't end there either, for several American families got in on the opium and slave trade rackets. Participating in the opium trade, we have, predominantly, the Astor, Cabot, and Russell families. John Jacob Astor we have already met. Remember Henry Cabot Lodge in Teddy Roosevelt's circle of warmongers? His mother was a Cabot. The Russells we have not yet met but FDR's grandfather, Warren Delano, was manager of operations in China for the Russell family. On the slave trading side, two other Roosevelt patriarchs, Johann and Jacob, owned a slaving ship, the Expedition. The Browns were involved in the slave trade before they moved into banking, as was George Peabody, who ran the Georgetown slave market. If you think I'm stretching it by alluding to a connection between influential Americans like these and the conquering Normans of old, behold the roots of the following families. Peabody. Brown, Roosevelt, Astor, Taylor, Root, Russell, Cabot. Remember, Duke William of Normandy invaded and conquered England in 1066, winning at the Battle of Hastings. According to houseofnames.org. Peabody, Norman, granted lands by William the Conqueror for distinguished service at the Battle of Hastings in 1066. Brown, Norman, granted lands by William the Conqueror for distinguished service at the Battle of Hastings in 1066. Roosevelt, Norman, granted lands by William the Conqueror for distinguished service at the Battle of Hastings. Astor, Norman, granted lands by William the Conqueror for service at the Battle of Hastings. All of these families, and there are others, descend from a Norman ancestor who received lands in England from William the Conqueror after the Battle of Hastings. What are the chances?